Today, we've got a doozy. We're talking about the top 2021 worst mythics. Just because a card is good doesn't mean you should play it. If a card is good, you should play it. Just because a card is mythic doesn't mean that it's good. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We are going to talk about the worst... <laughs> the, the worst, worst what? <laughs> Worst mythics in EDH. But before we do, if you would, go down there, hit that like button. If you like the video by the end of it, hit that dislike button if you don't. Or click subscribe. That's a great way to support the channel. Or get involved on a deeper level and head on over to Patreon and join those shenanigans. It's a great fit if you like us. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the worst mythics <laughs> in 2021. All right. So this video so far is going as well as... <clears throat> All right, let's do this one more time. <laughs> Jake, I'm going to be honest. I used to think that this card was absolutely dope. Malfagor, two red, two black, two other for a 6-6 six, six flyer. When it enters the battlefield, discard your hand. Each opponent sacrifices a creature for each card discarded this way. So, Jake, you can have Malfagor enter, have a 6-6 six, six flyer. Opponents are sacking creatures. You're discarding cards, all for six mana. Or you can just like play Doomsday for four and then have a big flying, probably five, five or six, six for five or six mana. And cards in your hand. And all of your cards still. <laughs> yeah, a demon cannot be trusted and a dragon will not be ruled. Uh, even with amazing flavor text, it's not enough to make Malfagor playable, despite the fact that, yes, it is really, really cool. I do love the fire. I love the art. But again, the art is not enough to take your opponent's life total to zero. No. So, yeah, pass. Gaia's Revenge, two green, five other. Oh, Joel, I can't wait to talk about this card with you. Eight, five. Gaia's Revenge can't be countered. Okay, that's cool. Haste, I like that. Guy's Revenge can't be the target of non-green spells or abilities from non-green sources. That's kind of where this card loses its potency. Right here, you've got a seven mana investment for an eight power creature that does not have trample. So okay. a zero one token can block this, mm -hmm. even if it has haste. It can't be equipped by any of the best equipment in EDH. It must be a green equipment, and then you can equip it to Guy's Revenge. But Guy's Revenge ain't coming out of the chute holding a, you know, Loxodon Warhammer or anything like that. Despite the can't be countered, that's cool. I mean, the first time that you have an opponent just endlessly block this with like a Dark Steel Mirror or something like that, you're going to be like, why was I playing Guy's Revenge? Because that card doesn't do anything and mostly I just use it as a blocker all game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Next up, we've got Reap Intellect. It's a blue, a black, and two other plus X. Target opponent's going to reveal their hand. You choose up to X non-land cards from it and exile them. That is where the text of this card functionally stops for Commander. For each card exiled this way, search that player's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of the cards with the same name as that card and exile them. Then that player shuffles his or her library. Yeah. If you've got a rats, a shadowborn apostles or a persistent petitioners opponent in your pod, this card is dope. And don't listen to anything we say about how bad it is. Other than Joel, that, lots of plosives there. Lots uh, of peas. I tried lot to get of through all noises. The it's just bad. I mean, it's kind of cool if you have a bunch of mana and you're trying to just nuke an opponent's hand. But again, the fact that the bulk of the text doesn't even apply to the format. We didn't want to include a lot of cards like this that were functionally not playable in EDH. So you're not going to see a lot more stuff like this where it's like cards that check for other cards yeah it's just not very good and especially at sorcery speed it's just man is this card ever going to be good it's not no. going to be good right now two red for two loyalty walker tybalt uh it has a looting effect which is kind of nice some people like the looting effect but it's it's pretty it's pretty medium uh plus one for draw a card then discard a card at random uh, not great and then the minus four Tybalt feed blood, it deals damage equal to the number of cards in target player's hand to that player. Of course, you have to get there. Two uh, turns. You have to take two turns to get there. Obviously, that minus six gain control of all creatures until end of turn. Untap them, they gain haste until end of turn. Yes, if you get there, that is pretty fantastic. 
please, if you're playing against a bunch of creatures. Please let us know down in the comments below if you've ever ultimated with Tybalt the Fiend Blooded, because then I'll ask you for the lottery numbers so that we can go win some money. Tybalt the Fiend Blooded, discarding a card at random? Are you serious? I never want that. I never want that. I know that there are even some like, you know, fringe strategies where you may be having to do things at random. I don't like those strategies. Gamble, I don't play those like, strategies. there is a case for the card gamble, which sure. is search your library for a card. Like, I don't if you ever really play need, gamble, right? And you might not play gamble, but if you have a handful of cards, then gamble is okay. But even Tybalt is not letting you specifically go grab a card. You are just drawing a card, then discarding something at random. So, if there's anything in your hand that you care about, uh, Tybalt makes. It, it, it's it's just not good. It's just don't play it. Yeah, it's just terrible. Planeswalkers already powered down in EDH, and that one's even worse. Hellcarver Whoa, demon. A demon. Yep, six six. It's got to be six. good, right? Got a flyer, six mana for six six flyer. Jake, it's, we're already in business. When it yes. deals combat damage to a player, nice. Sacrifice all other permanents you control and discard your hand. Exile the top six cards of your library. You can cast any number of non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. You better pray to the sweet Hellcarver Demon that you have already fixed the top of your library and you have got the six cards that you can cast to win the game. I think to the casual player, this is an absolutely unplayable card, sacrificing all other permanents you control, essentially throwing the game away for can I win with the next six cards in my library? Is right. this six, six enough to close the game out? And most likely in EDH, no, it's, it's not. Yeah, it actually hurts to read it because I'm like, why? I'm trying to think of good applications for it. I'm like, yeah, let's, <laughs> it does hurt to read it. Let's move <laughs> on, Jake. Scab yeah, Ruinator also kind of hurts to read. Yeah, sure. Two blue, one other. This time for a 5-6. As an additional cost to cast Scab Ruinator, exile three creature cards from your graveyard. Oof. So if you're unfamiliar, you, you have to have those three, at least three in your graveyard to even cast this. Yeah. And then flying and you may cast Scab Ruinator from your graveyard. So kind of cool. There's a 5-6 flyer that's in your graveyard. However, if you do want to cast it... You have to be exiling creatures from the yard in order to do so. So they need to be creatures that you don't care about. And you need to be running some sort of strategy where your graveyard doesn't matter much to you, or at least the creatures in it don't matter much. What you're getting for exiling three creature cards from your graveyard, which could be very valuable in some kind of living end play, then mm -hmm. you're getting rid of that just for a five, six flyer with no trample, with no other abilities. It I don't a, know if it's necessarily worth it. You know, you do need to protect this with like a lightning greaves or some sort of, you know, swift foot boots or something like that. That way um, you aren't having to use that ability over and over again. But again, you know, a five, six flyer for three that can just get doom bladed or, you know, any kind of like go for the throat path, any kind of effect like that. Yeah, it's it's very medium to me. Uh, yeah. Commander, you could have big bulky flyers for uh, cheap costs, but a lot of the time that's just not even close enough to win the game. Right. Rowdy Crew here exemplifies that randomness that I really hate on cards. Enters a battlefield, draw three, discard two at random. And if they happen to share a type, then this becomes a 5-5 five, five trampler for four instead of a 3-3 three, three trampler for four. I just, I don't know why this card would ever be run in anything. It, you know, red is known for having pretty powerful stuff for the amount of mana that you are uh that you're paying for it and this is just not nearly enough for four mana in my opinion and especially in edh the card is extremely lackluster and it just doesn't really do uh anything that you want it to do no yeah you're completely right lich's mirror is one that it just sort of delays the inevitable it's one of these you can't lose if you and then you have to do this thing as a secondary uh lose condition but this one doesn't really provide you a path back into the game if you would lose, instead, you shuffle your hand, your graveyard, everything you own into your library, draw seven cards, life total becomes 20. I, this just seems like pay five to annoy your opponents and make the game last two more turns while you sit there and play lands that come into play tapped. <laughs> it would be different if maybe the permanents that get shuffled in were restricted in some kind of way like you other than enchantments lands. or other than yeah something like that i do think that this card gains some potency in like limited or uh for example in like a two-headed giant type scenario right a, a, like a two-headed giant limited but we're not 
playing that, right? We're playing Commander. And so in Commander, I think the card is just absolute trash. That's how I like to judge my Commander cards. Would I play this in a limited environment if it was two-headed giant? That's how you tell that Lich's right. Mirror is good. Wee! Because then at least you have an, a, a teammate that can kind of like stave yeah. off the opponent while you start playing lands no, yeah, again, Yeah, I right? think in two-headed giant in Commander, it would be... It, it, there's more of a case for it, but I would probably tell my partner don't put that in your deck let's this talk is, about a card i wouldn't even play in limited there you go four <laughs> mana for a four nine it does have flying it does have haste these are good right. keywords if a source would deal damage to you it deals double that damage to you instead okay that's really brutal this better have some dope text here at the bottom to give it some over the top quality if a source would deal damage to golden knight castigator it deals double that damage to golden knight castigator instead all right so this is just crap you could just absolutely like one hit kill yourself with this on accident just by having it on the battlefield this is a completely different card if this is doubling damage to anything that receives the damage all it does is deal double damage to itself and doubles damage of anything dealt to you. It just doesn't make any sense to me in EDH at all. It's just bad. Don't play it. It's just so awful. Hell Vault, three for an artifact. Pay one and tap, exile target creature you control. Okay. Or seven tap, exile target creature you don't control. Now here's the kicker. When Hell Vault is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return all cards exiled with it to the battlefield under their opponent's control. So if you're using this just as removal, let me put it this way. You're paying 10 mana to remove one creature that might also come back. You're paying 17 mana to remove two creatures that might come back if all they have to do is remove the Hell Vault. I don't even like this as a chargeable battery board wipe protection for yourself. I mean, pay one, tap it, exile target creature you control. You can only do that one at a time. I mean, if you want to, you could have this on the battlefield. So if someone casts, you know, Wrath of God in response, you can go ahead and exile your commander if you wanted to. Exile a big, you know, 10-10 flying trampling, some kind of beater you've got out. But then you then have to figure out a way to crack Hell Vault. And look, sacrificing artifacts isn't that difficult if you're... In, if you're intending to do it but again it's still like what are you getting what are you trying to do here i don't know it seems like there's better choices yeah absolutely i say we lock this video in the hell vault thanks so much for watching let us know down below if we pissed you off by putting one of these mythics on this list that you like and you actually play also let us know if you know of any mythics that are basically unplayable garbage in edh we'd love to make a sequel to this video with even more bad mythics yeah, if you've played any of these to great success, I can't wait to hear your stories in the comments and we will be there to be like, oops, we were wrong about that. That does seem like a good interaction. Until next time, I am going to be buttering up these to eat them like popcorn instead of put them in my decks. The popcorn joke was what we decided to go with. Did you hear wait. what you said? Did I fuck it up? No, I corrected you, though. You said just Perfect. because a card's good doesn't mean that you should play it. Is that what I said? <laughs> All right, let's take it again.